Welcome to the podcast 1017. Today I have a very special guest. His name is Dr. Sam Asif, and he's going to talk to us about the coronavirus and giving us a quick update on what's going on. So Sam, thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Of course. Um, you know, one thing that I think everyone's kind of worried about is, first of all, our doctors and nurses who are on the front lines, you know, are you guys being protected? Is, you know, are they offering you things to make sure that you guys are good because we're going to need you to take care of most of these people and, you know, and there's also medical supplies that are not enough. So I'm just curious, are they protecting you guys? Are they giving you the things that you guys need as well? You know, that, that's been an issue since the beginning. So the entire country is kind of on short supply of um, PPE or, you know, personal protective equipment. So that includes masks and gowns and gloves and, and all that. The main issue for us is getting, there's specific types of masks that we really need when we're doing kind of um, procedures, especially in the emergency room, like placing a breathing tube mm -hmm. that can cause a little bit higher risk to us. So we need special masks that are um, typically called N95 masks, although there's, there's different kinds, mm -hmm. um, or N95 respirators. Now that's what we're the shortest of, and that's kind of across the country. So, you know, hospitals are doing what they can to, to obtain those supplies from different places in the country, different places in the world. Um, for us, a lot of the doctors have kind of taken it upon themselves and nurses to kind of buy our own equipment. So just in case we do run out, which will most likely happen at some point, we have something to protect us. Mm -hmm. um, so I bought, you know, I bought a mask online, I, I bought some N95s, and there's been a lot of people that have been donating those types of things to us, which is super helpful. Wow, okay. So it really does sound like we are struggling not only um, having enough people on staff, but also just making sure you guys are protected, which is kind of scary. So with the testing, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Has it improved um, the ability okay. to receive the tests and the result times? Yeah, so testing is something that's improved a lot since the beginning. Um, now, I'm, I'm in California, so luckily we're kind of, we seem like we're going to be the last ones that are hit. Um, so we've had a lot of time to prepare. So initially, um, the issue was, you know, kind of developing these tests. And there wasn't kind of like a national standard for a lot of these tests. So a lot of private companies um, began, began kind of um, providing us with, with the ability to test patients. Now it's become a little bit more standardized, a little bit easier, and there's even rapid tests that um, are available. Um, my hospital will have it next week. Okay. So when it first, when these tests first came out, it was about a week turnaround time. Um, this rapid test should be in a matter of hours. Oh, wow. So that's improving. Yeah, initially when, when coronavirus or COVID-19 um, was blowing up in this country, we had a really, really hard time testing anybody. So we only tested very, very specific people, mainly the highest risk people and the people that we thought were gonna become the most sick. Young, healthy people, um, we almost never tested. And now for the most part, we're, not, we're still not testing a lot of young, healthy, asymptomatic people, people that aren't very sick. Um, but very soon we're gonna have the ability to test more and more people. Okay. There has been some mixed messaging, though, from the federal government and confusion with respect to masks. Yesterday, the CDC and the issued with new um, guidelines recommending like people where to wear masks and if they have to um, leave their homes, they should wear it, right? What are your thoughts on that? Should people be wearing their masks when they leave home? Should they not? Because some people are saying it's good. Some people are saying it's not. Yeah, so this, um, this is something that has been really, really confusing, mm -hmm. not just for the general public, but also for healthcare providers. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main reasons this, has become, this is so confusing is because we still don't know a lot about the virus and we're still learning about it. Mm -hmm. So this sort of virus, we consider um, uh, droplet isolation is, is sufficient for it, meaning um, uh, as long as you're six feet away from somebody, you shouldn't be easily infected. Okay. Now, um, that's kind of different from how other, other countries have been um, viewing it, which is uh, more, uh, uh, a, a little bit more conservative, meaning you want full protection um, if you're gonna be around these patients at all. Mm -hmm. Now for the general public, 
Um, the reason they've gone back and forth on this mask issue is because one, we don't want the general public kind of hoarding these masks and keeping them away from, from uh, you know, people on the front line who really need it. And two, the mask, uh, even now with the, with the new CDC um, announcement, the mask doesn't necessarily protect you, but if you happen to be one of those people that's not very asymptomatic and you don't know that you have the virus, it may help protect other people around you. Because when you wear a mask, the droplets, most of the droplets aren't getting through the mask. So you shouldn't be spraying the virus all over the place. But it's not typically going to help you. So if you're in, in close range with somebody, even with a regular mask or a scarf, you're still going to be kind of higher risk. Got you. Okay. That makes more sense. And I'm, I'm happy you're sharing that with us because I know there was a huge confusion on that. Talking about like Lysol, this hand sanitizer, everyone's going crazy about um, buying that at their homes. You know, is that helping, you know, stopping this virus? Is it really helping them? Do you think it's just a more of a media thing and marketing related? But what do you think? I, I think it's more of a fear thing. I think everyone's scared and there's, there's only so much that, you know, normal people can do. So this is something they view as potentially protective. Now, does it help? Probably not. Um, you know, all the experts, and, and I agree, the most important thing to do is wash your hands, warm, warm water, soap, um, frequently don't touch your face. Anytime you do touch anything, doorknobs or elevator buttons or whatever, um, make sure you, uh, you wash your hands. Now, sanitizer isn't going to hurt you, so if you haven't had sanitizer after touching a doorknob, that's fine, but it's not like, you know, it, it's, it's not necessarily going to protect you and it's not necessary that's the main thing hmm. and do you feel like we're getting close to finding a cure to this i mean i know it's been up in the air and people haven't really said anything yet um do you feel like there is something out there that there might be coming soon or is this going to be prolonging for quite some time um most likely it's going to be it's going to be a little while now um there are vaccines in the works now vaccines for all viruses that's kind of the best way to protect yourself from a virus. Um, unfortunately, it's gonna be a while because we need to make sure those vaccines are, are safe and they need to be tested in humans, which I know is being done now, but it's still gonna be, you know, six to 18 months down the line, depending on um, who, who you listen to. Uh, as far as medications, there really hasn't been uh, a medication that's been super important, um, super beneficial. Um, there are medications that have been mentioned in the media um, and are based on small studies that may help us. Um, and we are using a lot of those medications in, in the sickest patients just because you know, we don't really have any other better options. Um, but so far, nothing's stood out um, exceptionally well. Hmm. Now, being a doctor and being in the front lines, I mean, are you fearful like for yourself and you know the loved ones around you because you are putting yourself in danger in some way but to help others has it made you question your career i mean i'm always curious about that now really facing something that is so you know no one knows what they can do until something comes out and cures this so am i am i scared yes uh, most of the time i think um when all this news first came out i think we didn't really believe it was going to be as bad as it is mm -hmm. um and then as as more and more news came out especially in the news out of italy um with doctors dying and you know not being able to care for all the patients that they had mm -hmm. um it has definitely been kind of you know anxiety provoking mainly because we don't know that much about it and um we're still learning about the best ways to protect ourselves and the best way to treat it. Um, the thing I get anxious about the most is having more patients, having more sick patients than I'm able to care about, mm. um, or care for rather, um, you know, mainly running out of ventilators, running out of hospital space, running out of staff with ability to, to care for them. Mm. So um, that's what, that's what scares me. That's what keeps me up at night. Now that we've learned more about it, I think I'm, you know, I'm kind of more in that acceptance phase. I think I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm, I feel more prepared, more ready for it. Um, has it made me question my career? No. I mean, this is why I went into emergency medicine. This is, um, you know, 
this is what really makes us feel important and, and useful to society as, as doctors, being the people that are on the front lines and, and able to help people. Of course, there's some risk involved, but um, you know, for me, that's, that's worth it. That's why I went into this field. Mm. Do you think this is going to help you in the future? I mean, are you uh, now going through this and seeing how much we aren't ready for something like this? Is this making you think more about maybe what you can do to set yourself up for success? Hopefully for not next time, but if something does happen, because, you know, world sometimes history does repeat itself, right? Um, are you figuring out the same yeah. way, like I'm trying to create more solutions for yourself? Oh, totally. I mean, I think that's, you know, there, there are some positives of this whole thing. And this is one of the biggest in my mind. Um, this will definitely happen again. Mm -hmm. So now at least, you know, this is the first time we've had such a widespread pandemic. Um, so I think we have learned that this is possible and we're going to be better prepared next time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you know, the CDC will be well funded from now on. Hopefully we'll have good, good stores in the, in the nation as far as, you know, ventilators and PPE and all, all the supplies that we need. Um, so yeah, I think that's great. And even on a hospital level, um, you know, I think the hospitals, because every hospital has a disaster plan, but we've never faced this sort of disaster where the patients are so sick and so sick for so long. Um, that's been a little bit more difficult and, and different and unique to this virus. So for sure, I, I expect us to be better prepared next time. Hmm. What advice would you give to people right now watching? Um, what can they do to make sure they're protecting themselves and the people around them? Uh, you know, the main thing is do your social distancing. I mean, it's, it's working. We're seeing it in, in California compared to New York. I think we, um, we've done a better job of um, kind of social distancing. We had, we had all the, um, the mandatory uh, things in place even before New York did. And we're not seeing anywhere near the numbers in New York yet it doesn't mean that we're not going to but at least we've been able to buy ourselves some time mm -hmm. so social distancing wash your hands you know everything all the experts are saying try your best to stay away uh, or at least stay um, physically far from um, loved ones maybe parents grandparents who have some um, uh, medical conditions that make them higher risk copd heart disease um, cancer you know, high blood pressure, those are, those are um, factors that we're seeing that, um, uh, you know, those patients will be much more sick than, than normal healthy people. So even if you feel well, it doesn't mean that you don't have it. If you have a, even a little runny nose, little cough, you could have the coronavirus, which may not be a big deal for you, but could be a much bigger deal for, for older, sicker people. Mm. Thank you for that advice. Mm -hmm. Lastly, since there's going to be a lot of Jews listening to this and really taking some of your advice seriously, if there are Jews out there who are willing and wanting to donate, where can they do that for you? Because I know you guys are struggling. So if there's anyone out there who would like to donate, how can that work um, happen? Oh, well, that's a great question. Um, you know, I don't know off uh, offhand. Mm -hmm. I'm sure every hospital has have, have different ways that you can um, donate to them. I'm trying to think. I'm sure there's something online. I just don't know it off the top of my head. I could I could track that down for you. Yeah, that would um, be but you know, even if you just happen to have if you happen to have a lot of surgical masks or something, you could just take it to your local, you know, hospital, local fire department. That would be super helpful. We've gotten a lot of drop offs like that at my hospital and you know, we we have been sharing in those supplies because at this point that's that's as good as it's gonna get, it's looking like for a little while. Um so yeah, that's, that's probably what I would say. Perfect. Okay. Well, when you do figure out if whatever, if you want to share your hospital name as well, um, I know Joe and Sally would be more than happy to share that out there and hopefully be able to support you guys. And um, mostly, most importantly, thank you for what you're doing. We all appreciate you. And thank you for being on this uh, interview. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for having me. No problem. All right, guys, stay tuned to the next update. And in the meantime, wash your hands and please stay safe. All right. Talk to you soon.